it's also really amazing how many good players come from the Philippines. Oh, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I went to Philippines when I was 15. What was that like? Uh, it was crazy. I went with my friend and uh, I uh, I was playing everybody. You know, I was playing a bartender that I couldn't beat. I was 15 and I was, I, was, I was thinking I'm good. I mean, I was coming there to play good players, but I ended up playing everybody and I was just amazed how, how good everybody's playing over there. Like the guy who works 24 hours behind the bar just never plays pool. I mean, he's just, just a regular player in some random pool room can run a couple of racks playing nine ball. That's how, how crazy it is. For me, it's insane. If you walked in, into the bar here or anywhere else, I mean, would you imagine that the guy will run a two-pack of nine ball? Probably not. Yeah, most likely not. And it it happened multiple there. times for me there. Really? So yeah. the, does the level seemed higher there? Yeah, yeah, and the game is really, really big. I mean, the taxi drivers, they know who, everybody knows who Efren Reyes is, you know, Francisco Bustamante. I've met people that are Filipino immigrants to America, and and they'll tell me they're Filipino. I go, do you know who Efren Reyes is? And they're like, Bata. Yeah. Like, yeah. they know who he is. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Like, it's pool, like. Pool is really, really big in the Philippines. Well, Pool came over the Philippines in the 1950s when the GIs were over there. So American GIs were over there, and they brought Pool to the Philippines, and the Filipinos just took over. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, like how that transpired, because when they play over there, they're playing on very tough conditions because the tables are all damp because it's very humid outside, and a lot of times. The tables are not balanced very well, and the cloth is dirty, and they use a lot of powder. Oh, yeah, they just throw it on the table. This they is crazy. It, yeah, they just leave it on the rails. They leave stacks of powder on the rails, yeah. which is unheard of anywhere else. No, and it's getting like, messy everywhere. See if you can find uh, there's these uh, Efren Reyes matches where he still plays right now. He's playing all the time. He plays constantly, and they put them up online. If go to uh, Star Star Billiards, Efren Reyes, and so when he's playing, not only did they have powder all over the table, which gets on everything. It's all over the table, but every time someone's about to shoot, someone who's like either gambling or someone who's been assigned to it comes over and marks chalk. Yeah. where all the bar balls are in case someone moves the balls. So mm -hmm. that's a big distraction. And then there's 50 people around the table with flip-flops talking on their cell phones. Well, also the the action side of pool in Philippines is huge. Like huge. you have people betting every game like yelling game uh, yeah. yelling names before every game starts. And you have like uh chickens running around the table. That's Literal chickens. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was watching the Alex Pagulayan video, and you hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's very common in the Philippines. Yeah. Right? It's. See, do you have any videos from Star Billiards? I don't know exactly what I'm looking at. Nothing's coming up from like a Star Billiards account. Yeah, I'll find something for you. It's it's pretty specific, but the scene there is so fascinating because it's contrary to everything that you would ever expect in a in a pool tournament, in a tournament other than the Moscone Cup where people are cheering in between shots, in these turn in these matches that they're playing, there's so much distraction. Oh, distractions every shot. I mean, they're trying to shark you too because if you're a foreign player coming to Philippines, they most likely will be betting against you. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, see, I'll find something for you here. Hold on a second, Jamie. This is this guy, Jeff Guy Ling, G-A-L-I-N-G. Um, yeah, go to, uh, here, I'll send this to you. Here we go. Hold on a second. Share, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Here, I sent you something. Um, so this place, the way they do it, is the best uh, preparation against someone distracting you because they're constantly distracted so they learn how to like relax and focus so here look at this game so look. <laughs> yeah that's a typical game in the philippines everyone's smoking cigarettes people are taking selfies they're all surrounding i mean they are feet from the table 
like moving around walking while the match is going on with oh, flip yeah. flops on and you have to move them to shoot every yeah. ball like imagine if you're that frozen that back short rail yeah you have to get in the corner and say excuse me and these guys are on their phone and <laughs> It's so normal. Now, look at the powder. So there's a stack of powder on each side rail. And the stack of powder is so that they can use it and keep the, the cue ball moving slick through their hand. But no one anywhere else does this. No. Well, uh, you can also imagine how humid it is. Over yeah. There. Well, he's just practicing right now. He's, he's getting ready and warming up. So scoot ahead a little bit so you can actually see the match. This is not the match for sure. Here we go. Now, now he's actually playing. So that fucking powder, that shit gets on the table itself, and it slows everything down. And it also makes the balls cling. They stick to each other. Oh, yeah. He's grabbing the cue ball before every game starts, too, and yeah. it, it gets on the cue ball, and then... But the because they play in these imperfect conditions, because they're accustomed to it, they develop these amazing strokes. Oh, I mean, yeah. Efren's stroke is just a thing of beauty. And also, he, I think that's probably one of the reasons why they chose heavier cues. Because they were dealing with this very slow cloth, because it was always dirty, humid conditions. So in humidity, the balls don't move as well because there's dampness on the table. Oh, he is getting a spot from that guy. It looks like he's getting a spot. Well, you know, Efren's very old now. Yeah. He can't see very well. But the guy's still in action. Constantly, yeah. every 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 week. I'm but sure. look at this fucking crowd. Look at all these people. So this guy, uh, Jeff Guy Ling, he has uh, this YouTube channel where he's constantly showing these matches look from the, the people Philippines. On the street, they're just yeah. That's, that's the street there. Yeah, the doors open. Yeah, There's waiting. people on the street outside that can't get in that are watching this match because that's what kind of a legend Efren is. Yeah, There's a guy sitting in the closet over there. Yeah, he's in a fucking <laughs> closet watching from the closet. <laughs> I mean, in any other pool room, like if you were in Texas and this was going on and you're gambling, you'd be like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, why is everybody near the table? They're, they're right there. They're like where I am, like right here. Yeah. They're that close to the table while some of the best players in the world are playing. But it's really good practice, like you said, after, after playing in such a different experience. Yeah. Well, know. the Filipinos are what, what you call shark proof. Yeah. And what, what sharking is, people think of pool shark as being someone who's, like, really good at pool. That's not what we call sharking. Sharking, for the people that don't know, is, like, if you were about to shoot and I moved and distracted you on purpose. Like, I wait until you're right about to, sh to move and I'll drop my cue. Yeah. 